All right, it's my pleasure right now to be joined by LSU's 2003 National Championship quarterback. He had 28 touchdown passes that year. Not so bad for an average quarterback, right? Matt Mock. Matt, how you doing, man? Uh, doing great. Doing really well. Thanks for having me on. Good to see you. And uh, for those who don't know, you and your family have uh, been up in Colorado and Denver for quite some time, right? Uh, yes, since uh, well, really, two thousand six, probably. So yeah, it's been it's been a little while. And you're a dentist. I am. All right, good. Try, deal. try to be. Try to be. <laughs> uh, all right. So watching LSU so far, uh, the team opened the year. It was a close game going into the fourth quarter. Then the game turned into a dud, and now they're bouncing back, finding ways to win games. Just your general observations watching them so far. Uh, I, I've been impressed. You know, I think. Um, I think this is college football right now that uh, because you don't get the same people every single year. So I think you just never know. I think that what you're going to get in the team week one versus week 10 could be completely different um, from that. So I, I think we're seeing that with, with LSU um, that, you know, they're, they're growing, kind of learning everyone's role, where they're fitting in, everything like that. What's their identity. Um, and they, they, I thought they've looked really, really good the last few weeks. Uh, the quarterback position, for example, when you quarterbacked in 2003, how old were you? Um, I was 24. 24. I think. Yeah. So you were an older guy because you had played baseball. Baseball. Uh huh. And so Jaden Daniels right now, he's in his fifth year. Um, and so what's the difference between a guy being 46 and 41? Not much, <laughs> but maybe. 22 or 23 and 18 that's a big difference right so it's good it's great to have a veteran like they've got oh without a doubt I think you're especially in the SEC you're going into um, some pretty hostile environments um, and, and the more experience you've had I think the better suited you are I mean, you still have to go play um, but the nerves aren't there uh, you kind of know what to expect um, so I think it's a huge advantage um, to have Jay now so I think it's a, a huge advantage uh, to have um, Nussmeyer as well, because there's not many teams that, that have a good backup. Typically now we see if I don't win the starting job, I'm out uh, and I'm going someplace else. So I, I think LSU is extremely fortunate to ha have probably one of the best quarterback situations uh, in the country. I guess, Matt, when you play, they met with you in the off season. They said, Hey Matt, this is what, you, what we like. This is what we want you to improve on. And with Jaden, they said, look, 17 touchdown passes in 14 games. We want that number to go up. In four games, he's got 12 touchdown passes. Last year, he averaged 208 through the year. Now he's averaging 324. So he is really uh, statistically improved in a big way. Oh, without a doubt. And I think uh, playing quarterback, um, it's hard to simulate game reps uh, anywhere else. Uh, so the more game reps you get, typically the better you get. So what are you seeing out of Jaden? I mean, he's pushing the ball down the field more than he used to, and it does seem like I think there was a touchdown in the second half against Arkansas. Malik was coming across the middle. He hung in there. The guy's blitzing, and he hits him across the middle for the touchdown. Those are the progressions I'm seeing at least. Oh, without a doubt. I think um, in the past, um, because he is such a good athlete and a good runner, I think uh, he almost relied on that a little bit uh, too much uh, at times and potentially missed some big play opportunities. Um, can't fault him for it. He had success with it and, and did a really good job. But I think uh, this year he just seems much more comfortable in the offense. Um, and you, you see him getting through his progressions more, and he's not relying on his legs quite as much. You, you see any parallels uh, with yourself? You were a guy that could run, right? Mm -hmm. I mean – the Virginia Tech game in 2002. Sorry, sorry to bring up a bad memory, Matt. But uh, the guy you were in that game and then the guy you were at the end of your career was much different. Oh, without a doubt. Now, injury was part of the reason I had the Liz Frank injury in my foot. But um, but, but without a doubt. Um, and I think uh, playing quarterback, especially at a school like LSU um, or any of the SEC schools, you just have so much talent around you that even though – you know, Jaden's a very talented runner. I thought I was a pretty good runner. We're probably not as good as the guys around us. Uh, it's, it's the truth. So uh, get the ball into those guys' hands as much as you can. Uh, let me give the big guys up front some credit, right? Uh, the offensive line, they seem to be doing a very good job of giving Jaden a clean pocket and opening up the running game for Logan Diggs and the other guys as well. 
Oh, without a doubt. You know, I thought that was a bright spot last year, just how many young guys um, we had uh, in the lineup. And, uh, you know, it's not just the quarterback. I think every position, the more experience you have, um, typically the better you get. The wide receivers, there's something to be said maybe about a third year. Uh, Malik has been great without a doubt, but he is he's hit a different level this year in his junior season. Uh, without, I mean, he looks fantastic. You know, I think uh, LSU has been very fortunate to have a, uh, quite the, the list of, uh, of wide receivers and DBs, and it looks like we're, we're adding to that list. Uh, Brian Thomas, kind of the size maybe of a Michael Clayton, bigger guy, bigger target. Uh, mm -hmm. Last game, uh, perhaps his best game as a Tiger, two touchdowns. Uh, what are you seeing out of him? Yeah, he big like Mike, but way more athletic. Make, make sure Mike hears that, okay? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think, you know, uh, the one thing that um, – it's so important to have multiple options. Um, and I think they've had Taylor at tight end and neighbors, but it's it's great to have a, another option out there uh, and to be another threat. We haven't seen much of Chris Hilton lately. I thought he was going to be the uh, the speed stretch guy, a la Devery Henderson with yourself. Uh, I'm just wondering when we can see some more of uh, Chris Hilton. Yeah, you know, I think that's the ins and outs uh, in a program that uh, – you know, you, you just don't know what's going on, you know, um, could have some personal things, have trouble with the playbook, uh, you know, who knows what it is, or just, you know, hey, they're kind of making sure he's ready before they throw him in there. As a guy who played football and knows football, we, you know, this stuff fans get, they get emotional. They, maybe they, you know, like a spoiled brat. I want this. Uh, Caleb Jackson, they see him run over a guy at Mississippi State. And some people say, I've seen enough. He's the best running back we've got. You know, play him every down. And then Brian Kelly, the adult in the room, says, huh, tap the brakes. He's got to learn about pass protection and a lot of things, yeah. right? Yeah, well, I think that's the, the biggest thing uh, for running back. People don't understand that uh, if you can't be an extension of the offensive line, you're not going to play very much um, because you, you have to be able to do that. And you have to understand that if, the guy I'm assigned to block doesn't come to get out in your route uh, and be a weapon um, in the passing game. And it, it's hard for people to know that unless you're listening to the play call and you know what's happening. You know, it's, it's just very hard to see that on TV and understand that, hey, the pass got off and we completed it, but the guy didn't block who he was supposed to. We got lucky. You know, you can't as a coach, you can't put someone out there and just hope to get lucky. <laughs> you got to put someone out there that you know is going to do the right thing. Well, not to be melodramatic, but that's a play that could wreck your season if the quarterback gets injured. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, we get lucky this time. He, he gets it off. Next time he doesn't, uh, quarterback strip sack, take it to the house the other way, and, and game's over. And, and then on the other side of the ball, like Deshaun Womack, this young freshman, they put him in the game. He gets a quarterback sack, gets a couple of pressures. Helmet comes off, does a little dance. Uh, and then Coach Kelly's like, once again, the Caleb Jackson thing. Everybody wants to see this guy every down, but he's got to learn maybe maybe one uh, more than one rush or, you know, add a little more to his uh, repertoire. So, without a doubt. So, and, and again, those are the things I think uh, is the whole reason there's a, a, what is it, the Monday morning quarterback that uh, Peter King did. Uh, <laughs> everybody's got the answers. Uh, and uh and I think people people get to figure that out a little bit with fantasy football. That oh, I, I could do this, and then you end up picking a crappy team. Uh, you find out you're not that good at it. <laughs> I think you last time we chatted, you said, "Look, he's wide open. Well, he's 80 yards away. It's physically impossible for me to get the ball there, or, or things like that." Right? Yeah. Well, and then the corner, he wasn't in my progression. The corner fell down, uh, and I wouldn't even be looking over there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. So. Uh, I find it interesting. So Ole Miss this weekend is going to honor their SEC West champion team from 2003. And I think that's a co 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 West, right? And that's the co champs. <laughs> I um, and to do it against LSU, right? Maybe another opponent that it goes over their head. They don't notice that, but with LSU people in the stands and people on the sideline that say, "Wait a second, uh, who played in Atlanta that year?" Yeah. Um, you know, when you, when you don't have many championships, you've got to, you got to, you got to celebrate everything that you get, Jack. That's how it is. 
<laughs> this it's like hamburger helper, right? I mean, we need to, we got. <laughs> <laughs> you know you gotta spice you gotta spice it up somehow. That's a <laughs> got well, it's the kind of the powder. We got to throw some water. We gotta you know make some. I mean, look LSU at their LSU indoor. They've got I think SEC West champs '97 and and a couple of the years where they did not go to Atlanta. But to bring a team out on the field and to do all that against the team that beat them head to head. Uh, I, I don't know. It's just, um, I think that's a little living in denial, maybe, Matt. Yeah, I mean, I think they should bring me out there. I think I had three picks that game. I tried to, I tried to help them more than anybody else. I think they should have, I think they should have had me instead of Eli. <laughs> that's right, right? First pass of the game, they ran yep. it in. Yep. Uh, not, not a, a great memory, but then they, uh, you got beat up to get to the finish line a little bit in that game. Oh, we did. Yeah, they actually, uh, to their credit, that year, um, they ran a defense that they hadn't run all year long. They had basically six guys just standing up on the defensive front, kind of what uh, Arkansas was known for um, uh, at the time. Uh, and it was we were were not prepared for it, uh, myself included. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Debra Henderson, right? First played the fourth quarter. Uh, yeah, yeah, we hit him on a uh, on a little corner route. So as I said, I mentioned the three picks. I did have two touchdowns too. Okay, so it wasn't all bad uh, for that. And, and the very unathletic Michael Clayton, he caught uh, like a little. What would you call that? Slip screen or something? He did. Yep, yep. Uh, Mike did a great job. Uh, and, and so, and I think that was a, a testament to our team that year that uh, we we're just mentally tough. You know um, that. Uh, and I, I tell the story all the time. I, I remember, you know, obviously I'm first play of the game pick six uh go the other way they score a big game um and uh not one teammate said anything other than came up pat me on the butt hey you'll be fine don't worry about this we got you um and i think that's what made that team special and made us uh, a true championship team right so they need to know that <laughs> and the one that won the national title too by the way uh yeah. Well, of course, that was cold. We, we admit that was, uh, it was the uh, USC uh, cheated, but they still won the AP. <laughs> That's right. That's right. What was it, Keith Jackson, the great Keith Jackson? God bless his soul. He came on like at the end of the Rose Bowl. It was like, I don't care what happens in that Sugar Bowl. Your national champion is here today. Your USC Trojans are, you know, something. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Real quick, you've told you've talked about in the past. I think Nick Saban said it was perhaps the nastiest atmosphere he ever went into. He had never got so many one finger salutes. Uh, you got one too from a an adolescent. Yeah, from like a six year old. Uh, I remember sitting on the bus and I'm like, oh my god, look how cute that kid is. And then it was <laughs> that guy's 26 now. Maybe he's out there somewhere. Maybe he's at the game <laughs> yeah. this weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Good stuff. Can you believe it's twenty years since you played on that team? It, uh, I, I, you know, I, I said when I um, when I had kids, I was like, God, life is is going, you know, just so fast. Uh, I called my dad and I was like, Man, you know, did you feel that? He goes, Doesn't get any better; it only gets worse. <laughs> Somebody told me that work the other day. I made some reference to how quickly time passed or whatever, and he said it only gets worse. It, it only it only speeds up. That's depressing. I don't want to hear that. Right. The, the good news, though, Jack, is I, I get better with age, right? My my accolades get a little bit, a few more touchdowns. The Instead of a 60-yard pass, it was a 70-yard pass. So that there's some good things that come from that. Did, did I say 28 touchdowns in 2000? Yeah, I, think, I'm you're, at 40. I think you were wrong. I think you were wrong. <laughs> I'm at 40. Yeah, yeah. Y all, y all, and y'all didn't go 13 and one. You won them all. There, there was no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it's less than j half of Joe Burrow's record, is what you should say. That's what you should say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen again, is it? I mean, I know I know the rules no. favor the offenses and all that, but 60 touchdowns. It's, I mean, it was just, uh, I don't even know how to explain that year. I mean, that was just this like unbelievable kind of. Um, come together with uh, the right receivers or, I mean, cause really Jamar Chase and, and Justin were good before that, but weren't great. I mean, but those guys, and you've seen what they've gone on to do in the NFL. I mean, it was just, everybody kind of uh, hit their stride at the right time. Um, and I think the same thing that we had in 2003, they just had a, a, a good group of guys that liked each other and really got along, um, played well together. We went, 
The only time I've ever been to the Heisman Trophy, and I, I I wasn't even in the room. We were in a hotel across the street. But I remember the flight on Sunday morning, leaving New York City, early flight, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. So it's kind of quiet, and I look, and I, I guess I could see in the Times Square or something. I just see the big jump, the big screen, and it's Joe Burrow, and it's a Heisman Trophy, Joe Burrow. And I'm like, am I in a dream right now? You know, is this, this is real? <laughs> I mean, our, our, I, I still think the the – greatest single season um, quarterback season uh, in the history of college football. I mean, it was just, I mean, I don't think you'll get anything close to that again. And look, we, we know how we feel about Alabama around here, but if it was Alabama or any, anybody in 2020, I don't even know how you could even say greatest when it's the worst ever in 2020, when some teams they're not even playing. Some teams are playing five games. Games are getting canceled. There's no, fans in the stands i mean yes alabama was the best of that but that was not really a season no not at all i mean it's just totally different i mean just especially in the sec i mean the environments you go into as a quarterback is there's just nothing like that what was the uh what was the worst one you went into was it that old miss or, or or where was what was the toughest place probably the, the worst was i wasn't even playing this was um two I think it was 2000. Um, I traveled with the team. Remember when they had that uh, Jefferson pilot games, those 10 o'clock games? Yeah. We went to Florida, yeah. played at 10 o'clock, early in the season, hot as can be. And uh, they, I mean, just absolutely annihilated us. And it was loud and uncomfortable. And it, it was, it, it was, um, it was good to get back at them in 2002 uh, and beat them by like 30 points um, uh, just because the, the, the Florida fans are great, but they're kind of obnoxious. That was the uh, infamous broke trout look. Nick yes, 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 yes. Yeah. 41 to nine. Sorry. I, I just remember I, I've got no life. 41 to nine was the final <laughs> and Spurrier in his two games against Saban. It was not pretty. Um, he, he crushes at home uh, the next as year. well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that, Rex Grossman had like five touchdown passes in the first half or something. Right? Yeah, I, I, yeah, dreary day, two thirty CBS kickoff, and just to humor you, I remember the post game show. This Nick Saban guy, we're paying him one point two million for defensive back play like this, you know, and they, you know, it was not looking like greatest coach of all time that day. Yeah, yeah, well, he worked out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny. Uh, we did that chat in the middle of COVID. No one, there was nothing to do, right? But watch Tiger King and the last dance with Michael Jordan and all that. Uh, and then you and I just do a, a just off the cuff interview where you say, yeah, I hadn't talked to Nick Saban since the national championship. And that just, I just tweeted it or whatever, shared it. And it just made these big headlines. Oh my goodness. You know, people were yeah. shocked. Yeah. And I, I have tons of respect um, for coach. I really do. I mean, I, I, uh, I um, play for him again, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, people ask, he's just, he's not warm and fuzzy. He's not going to, you know, send your Christmas cards or talk to you or anything like that. So, uh, but that's okay. I, I didn't sign up to get Christmas cards or best friend. I signed up to be a better football player. And I think he did that. Just watching from afar. Do you think he's going to, where, where is retirement in Nick Saban's future? Oh, I think with if they don't do something about NIL and transfer portal, um, I, I think we're gonna we're gonna have a mass exodus. Um, I, it's just um, people didn't. It's just not what you sign up for. Um, you know, it's uh, it's hard enough when you have um, uh, a twenty eight year old that's making millions of dollars that has had some experience, and you got a kid that's eighteen that's never done anything, and he's making two, three, four million bucks. And, you know, oh, he's got 10 handlers that are, I'm worried it's, you know, it's 90 degrees out. I don't, I don't know if I want him practicing the full thing. It's just, it's too much, too much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and I'm not trying to sound like, you know, the old guy here, but I agree with you because uh, like they talk about LSU women's basketball. Well, the coach makes that much, you know, coach makes millions, but the coach has become a paid <laughs> Has put in a lot of time too. He didn't right. make millions. he didn't make millions at eighteen. Coach worked his butt off and was an intern and did all these things. Correct um, for that. Um, and the coach does 
the player plays, but the coach does way more off the field than what the player does. Um, for, and I think players should get paid. That's not me like crying poor. Hey, we didn't make my, I'm all for players getting paid, but it needs to go into a pool and someone needs to uh, keep track of it. Guys need to be having to pay tax out of it. I mean, I think there's going to be all kinds of issues that come up where guys have been given money, then paid tax on it. And what's going to happen? You know, and most of the most of the guys that when I was 18, someone gave me five hundred thousand dollars. I probably would have spent four hundred ninety nine thousand. Uh, it's just, you know. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I talked to an, an assistant coach and he's like, man, I was a nomad. I mean, I was living off my wife, honestly, until I got to this point to make the money I'm making 20 years down the road. And people that have proven themselves and, 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 you know, Brian Kelly, I mean, he was at Notre Dame 12 years before he came to LSU. He's not jumping jobs every single year. And yeah. uh, so you yeah. really think this is really wearing on Nick Saban? The, the- I think it's wearing on everybody. And I think when you get a guy like, I mean, I think Nick Saban loves coaching football, but Nick Saban has nothing left to prove. <laughs> you know what? He's probably, he can retire now. And I mean, Arguably, it made some people say Bear Bryant, whatever. But he's he's the greatest college football coach ever. I mean, yeah. it, that's all there is to it. Um, so I, I don't think he has anything left to prove. Um, and I, I just don't think that's how – it would be very hard, I think, uh, being in that environment. Mass exodus, you think coaches are going to say, I've had enough? Uh, I mean, if you're Jimbo Fisher, if you're uh, Dabo Sweeney, I mean, those guys don't need more money. All right. Hey, great seeing you, man. Thank you. Anytime, man. Always love coming on with you.